At this point, I'd like to illustrate how some of these thermodynamic relationships can come in handy. I want to focus on liquid to vapor transition. And I'll note that at equilibrium, at the phase equilibrium, I've got that the Gibbs energy change has got to be equal to zero. But this then implies that the vaporization of enthalpy um, is going to be equal to the temperature of vaporization times the enthalpy change, uh, the entropy change of vaporization. So I have this relationship uh, between these things. Now the liquid to vapor transition means that we're going from a condensed fluid phase into a less condensed fluid phase, a, a more uh, mobile uh, fluid phase. And it turns out that for a lot of liquids, especially liquids uh, that don't have strong intramolecular, intermolecular forces, like hydrogen bonding, uh, we call these non-associative liquids. So they're not forming strong complexes uh, with uh, molecules of the same type. We find that the, the entropy change for vaporization tends to range between about 85 and 88 joules per mole Kelvin. In other words, it's a pretty consistent small range. So this was observed uh, many years ago and uh, seemed to be consistent for over a wide, uh, wide range of different fluids, this being the main uh, quality that they need to have in common. And it suggests then that if one knows, so if the vaporization temperature is known, we can estimate the enthalpy of vaporization from this entropy change of vaporization. So let me illustrate this with an example. Let's take benzene, and let's say that we've gone in the lab and we've measured the vaporization temperature of benzene as 353.2 degrees Kelvin. Let me make that over a little bit. All right, so this is going to be the temperature of vaporization. So that would lead us to estimate the enthalpy of vaporization for benzene to be something on the order, let's take 88 just for fun, so 88 joules per mole Kelvin multiplied by the temperature of vaporization, 353.2 Kelvin, so the Kelvins will cancel and I'll have joules per mole. And if I then cancel, convert that into kilojoules per mole, I'll get a figure that's about 31.1 kilojoules per mole. Okay, well, how accurate is that? Well, the value that uh, is accepted to be the value for benzene is 33.9 kilojoules per mole. So you can see that Troughton's rule doesn't give you exact answers, but it's within 10% of the right answer. So uh, Within that degree, I would say, of error, we can actually use Troughton's rule to get some useful information just from one piece of data. We measured the temperature of vaporization, and we got an estimate of the enthalpy of vaporization. Now, I do want to clarify, I said uh, this has to work for non-associative fluids. So if you have something, and I'll say like water, or something like ethanol, or even something like hydrogen fluoride, this doesn't work. Does not work well. I guess I should have written does. Does not work well. So we need to be careful about when we use this, but for a lot of hydrocarbons and things that don't have hydrogen bonds in them, um, we can use this and get a fairly good estimate of this, and you'll get a chance to try this yourself on one of the problems.